Uh, we're looking at why is Africa divided with regards to support for Palestine. We have the honor to uh, welcome Mr. Elijah Nwoko. He's a researcher with Flix University. Uh, Mr. Elijah Nwoko, it's a pleasure having you on the program. Just before you came in, uh, Dr. Matsanga described uh, Hamas as a terrorist organization, and we are focused on what are the historical factors that have influenced Africa's divided support for Palestine in the uh, Israel-Gaza war. What's your description of uh, Hamas and what historical context do you want to highlight with regards to what we're having uh, presently since uh, uh, Hamas attacked uh, Israel? Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for having me one more time, uh, Luis. I think um, at the pan as an African, what interests me is the interest of Africa, first and foremost. That's what interests me. So any action, anything that any organization, country, people do that endangers the prosperity of Africa, that stops the international community from looking at the issues that are happening in Africa, that diverts the attention of the whole world from the issues that are happening in Africa is a disservice to the continent of Africa. So let's put it very clear because we are talking about Africa and we believe that Africa should be our priority. So any action that takes place on the central stage that does not favor Africa is a disservice to Africa. So if you are an African out there and you are listening to us, the question you should be asking yourself and the question I should be asking myself is, how does Hamas terrorist attack on Israel favor Africa? Because right now, the whole the attention of the whole world is taken away from the issues that are happening all over Africa and the rest of the world, the attention is now focused on Hamas and Israel war. The attention before now has been focused on Ukraine-Russia war. Now the attention is now focused on now Ukraine-Russia war and Hamas-Israeli war. So does that work well for Africa? I would say no. Even if you don't, do not want to go to the historical perspective of this war, just from a geopolitical strategization and the influence that it has on the continent of Africa is negative for Africa. So what Hamas did, apart from being a terrorist attack from <clears throat> little children who had nothing to go to the war. So let's put this logically, Luis, and ladies and gentlemen out there. If Hamas, that thinks that they are fighting Israeli politicians and the army, if this had been an attack on Israeli military camp, then even from a moral perspective, somebody would say, yes, they have been fighting the Israeli military people, uh, government for a long time now. It's a resistance or it's for rights or, for, or whatnot. But you're talking about innocent civilians, little children, their school blown away. Children doing whatever they were doing, their school being taken away. Little children being killed just for existing or being Israelites. Is that justification? What kind of justification will you give? Whether you have sentiments for Palestine or you have sentiments for Israel, what justification can you give for blowing the heads of innocent children, having fun, little children, having fun, women and girls who had nothing to do with the war that's happening between Israel and Palestine or the resistance or the struggle that goes on between Israel and Palestine. That is why it doesn't matter your, your uh, political perspective or religious background, you should condemn this terrorist attack and say, this is wrong, this is bad, this is evil. Because sometimes I find this hypocrisy from our fellow friends in Africa who are in countries that are going through war, especially countries like you know, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Cameroon, uh, Sudan, and so on. You are condemning terrorist attack in your country. You are condemning those who are cutting people's head and all whatnot. And then a similar situation that happened elsewhere, you now take either a religious tint to it, instead of condemning it as an evil act on innocent people, you put a religious bent on it in order to support terrorism. It is wrong. Whatever, like my colleague was saying there, that Fakima did, it was wrong. It was not his position to speak, take religious sentiment and speak on behalf of African Union. This is a terrorist attack which he did not condemn. And that is what we find ourselves in Africa. If you look at the European Union, yes, I know that a lot of people who have these, you know, 
bad feelings against the Europeans because of imperialism and colonization. We all understand that. But from a logical perspective, look at how they are united against terrorism. They spoke as one voice. They have one agenda. They go by their platform. They go by what they have all agreed to do. But you find a Secretary General or Chairman of uh, African Union using religious sentiments to send out a statement that did not tie in. That's why you find fragmentation in the African community. And King there coming very strongly condemning Hamas. You find Democratic Republic condemning Hamas. You find Zambia and these other countries. And then you find the Secretary General of their own organization saying Hamas is fighting for their rights. That is augmentation that we find within Africa. And until we come together, have a full flesh agenda of what we want, you will continue to find this fragmentation, uh, fragmentation within Africa. Because we do not have a common platform on how to speak. Even if we have, we are so fragmented because we have different interests in Africa. Some religious interests, some political interests, some, you know, that is the problem that we're having in Africa. And if you want to talk about the historic, uh, historical perspective, Luis, as you ask the question, this war, some people think that Israel started existing in 1948 when Israel was created. That is a limited version of it. The problem we are having in the Middle East today, if I want to give you the historical perspective, comes from the Khartoum Conference of 1967, when the Arab League gathered together and they came out with a resolution that says, no peace with Israel, no negotiation with Israel, and Israel must not exist. The Hamas, which is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, that even Egypt itself had banned them. Those are the offshoot uh, 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 that went to Israel, uh, Hamas, I mean uh, Gaza, won the election, I think, 2006, if I remember the day very well, and defeated Fatah. The defeat of Fatah was the beginning of problems in the Middle East. Fatah was, no more, was not a radical movement the way Hamas is. Hamas does not believe the existence of Israel as a nation. That's the problem. When you don't believe that Israel should exist, this problem will not stop. So even from a conflict resolution strategy, you look at it and say, you look at an organization that does not believe that one other country, its neighbor should exist, because if you look at many United Nations conferences and peace accords and all whatnot, they have been efforts to organize and stabilize a two-state solution. Israel living together with Palestine. But we've seen Hamas take this hardline stand and said, Israel must not exist as a nation. Do not believe in Israel as a nation. That is the genesis of this problem. If they had believed, this peace process would have gone long a long way and there would have been peace in the Middle East. But we continue to say Israel must not exist as a nation. That is what we see happening in the Middle East today. Because if you look at even Egypt, I don't want to go into all the fighting that happened between Israel and its neighbors. But if you look at the fight that's going on in Egypt, I mean uh, in, uh, in Israel, even Egypt themselves, they're having a problem opening the Gaza Strip to refugee from the Gaza State. Why? Because they don't know who is coming in and who is going in. Egypt itself does not want Hamas. Jordan does not want Hamas. Syria does not want Hamas. The only people that are funding Hamas is Iran. That's funding Hamas. That tells you that this organization is not an organization that is seeking for peace. So for Africa to go and start taking sides without knowing the historical perspective of what we are talking about here, that is where we find ourselves in problems because we do not have a common platform. Yes, I do understand that countries like South Africa, right from the time of Yasser Arafat, they had banded together with uh, the uh, late Nelson Mandela because, you know, Mandela seems to have sympathy for them because he believed that the fight against apartheid was synonymous to the fight of the Palestinian against Israel. But that is different. Yasser Arafat stood for the two-state federation. He agreed on that. Hamas does not, ladies and gentlemen, those who are listening, Hamas does not agree on the two-state solution of Palestine living together with you. Do not. All they agree all one is Israel must be wiped out from the face of the earth. And that is the propaganda that's coming from Iran. So for an African country, for Africa to start, you know, jumping into it without knowing what they're going to, you are actually, you know, agreeing or either disagreeing with terror. That's what it is.
Because if you find why, you know, if some people will be questioning why Kenya had to come out so strong to con condemn Hamas. They are also dealing with Al Shabaab. You people who are dealing with terror, they feel the pinch. Exactly. So you're not going to dictate them and they should do this or do that. So again, the Afghan Union need to get its act together and speak as one voice. Otherwise, this fragmentation is going to continue. And international, I mean, uh, different countries are going to exploit it. You know, Egypt, I mean, uh, Israel will come in, they want to exploit to their own advantage. The Arab world will come in, want to exploit to their advantage. And Africa will continue to be fragmented. We should speak as one voice. The problem is that we do not have a common agenda, which we see. We don't have it. Even we have it, nobody respect it. You ask yourself the question, the communique that was sent about uh, Musa Fakima, who wrote that? Who wrote that communique? If they all wrote it, if they agreed on it, you wouldn't find Kenya saying a different thing, Democratic Republic of Congo saying a different thing, Zambia saying a different thing, South Africa saying a different thing. They are so fragmented because they do have a common platform work. That is the problem in Africa, Louis.